Every week, the contestants will be put through innovative business challenges where they'll compete for $100,000 in cash and prizes. Only one can take it all, and it's up to you at home to click and vote for your favorite. Welcome to The Interview Season 2. After an amazing effort last week that raised over $33,000, none of the contestants were eliminated. After they were divided into their new teams, they were given the task of selling 15,000 shirts for Pink Shirt Day. They also had to quickly organize as many speaking engagements with local schools and a public pep rally to raise awareness of Pink Shirt Day on April 4th. Unfortunately, things quickly turned south and both teams failed to live up to expectations. Who will come out on top, who will stay, and who will be eliminated? Find out now on The Interview. Well, good evening, Final Six, and welcome to the elimination show of The Interview Season 2. Today, of course, our business partner was the Saskatchewan Red Cross, and we have Tim Johnson here to say a few words. Absolutely. Well, firstly, I'd just like to extend the thanks to the Canadian Red Cross, to Rockbridge Realty, to all their fantastic sponsors, and particularly to you guys, the contestants. You have all done such a fantastic job. With every donation that you've brought in, every message that you've shared, you've reached and inspired people here in Saskatchewan. It's just been brilliant. So thank you, Tim. Very well said. Well, it's been quite competitive. And as the weeks go by and the challenges get more intense, there was a buildup of pressure and stress. And there's that equanimity that you have to find when pressure and stress build up so that you can be on top of your game. And typically in high pressure and high stress, you run into situations where you can get criticized, perhaps in a negative light. And the best defense for that is high performance and your own high performance. Some of you have challenged others to rise to your level. And it's interesting to see how every time these challenges play out, who actually stays focused on the end result, no matter how much pressure and stress comes into the equation. You have raised tens of thousands of dollars, and this week's challenge was three-part, to sell t-shirts on behalf of the Canadian Red Cross Imagine No Bullies campaign. You had to make school presentations, as many as you could, for awareness and to spread the word. And then you had to do a public forum or rally, which interestingly enough ended up being a combined effort, well, at least initially started being a combined effort. You guys appeared from my vantage point to all be working together for that public rally at the Cornwall Centre. Was that not the case? I'll direct that back to no, Brian. No, that, that was not the case. It was, uh, we just, there was tension right off the start and it just started building and building and then everyone was going at each other and there was no, there was no chemistry, there was no working together and, um, and it just, it showed in the overall rally. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I understand that you were able to book the forum for the Cornwall for the public rally. What were your feelings? Is that what happened, as Ryan identified? Um, pretty, pretty close. I mean, I, we decided as a group that, you know, we should pool all of our resources together to have the, create the most success because it's about raising awareness versus um, the actual com competitive uh, portion where it was about selling shirts. Was that what you and Tiffany were arguing about? I wasn't actually really clear what the issue she said was. She said, you know, now you want to work together. And I thought we were working together on this rally from the start. So um, I asked for a clarification of the issue and I never received that. So I'm not 100% sure what the issue was. Tiffany, did you want to clarify that? <clears throat> um, the issue was that it was a separate, we were supposed to be a team collaborative event. And in the end, it, when we got there, it was a separate deal. So then as a team leader, do you think maybe it would be one of your responsibilities to clarify that prior to starting the rally? It to was make sure prior you have to the rally that we made the phone call. Carrie, you also made some comments directed specifically to Yaya in regards to working as a team. Um, explain that. 
everybody is, was working together and we were all sharing ideas. It wasn't a plan set in stone, but all of a sudden, collectively, we were all kind of told that it was all a bad idea and she just kind of went off on her own. So, and I didn't understand the conflict at the Cornwall. Um, okay, well, let me cut in there though. This is the part of the competition where standing out is key. But not just standing out, standing out for the right reasons, staying focused on the key, the key subject and the key agenda is essentially important. Okay. Alex, with that public forum, how did you stand out? I mean, I was originally the one that had uh, come out and proposed the idea because I thought it would be an amazing idea if instead of splitting all of our resources and having to go two separate ways that we if we could have combined it could have been an absolutely an amazing event obviously it didn't turn out that way like like you said nothing ever works as planned perfectly so the part that i'm finding a little bit disturbing is what was the reason for you being there bringing awareness bringing awareness and where did all the focus end up going towards so selling t-shirts selling t-shirts but even less than that into bickering amongst the teams as far as pole position and who was right and who was wrong leading into the whole scenario. Well, I can tell you this, in, in real estate, as with many businesses, it doesn't always go as planned. And the ones that step up creatively with innovation and take a leadership role on themselves end up winning in the long run. Guys, I want to announce something for you, okay? We have a new total for fundraising for this week. Your total is $75,343.50. So congratulations, <laughs> give yourself a hand. Okay, that's a fantastic new total. We have been looking at those numbers and evaluating your guys' uh, performance on a week-in and week-out basis. Obviously, this last challenge is top of mind for the t-shirts and the public awareness. This is an elimination night. First, I want to address Alex again. Alex, you've been an excellent competitor. You bring a world of genuine, authentic, actually just refreshing attitude to the table. I think you've struggled a little bit with standing out though. Alex, you've done exceptionally well, but we have to put the interview to a close. All right, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. Thank, thank you, Alex. Pleasure. Everything about this has just been the most, I can't, I can't even explain it, it's just, it's been the perfect wake-up call. It's kind of just made me realize that I need to break out of my shell and put forth the effort to find and challenge myself as a person and find who I really am. Carrie, you came in to the competition and from the judges' point of view, kind of as a bit of an unknown, but you have proven to be a very strong competitor. We've seen you put yourself in probably uncomfortable situations and you seem to be comfortable in them. You're really making significant strides. I do believe that those strides, however, need time to be able to pull into place to be completely effective for yourself in this industry. Carrie, at this time, we have to close your interview. But thank you very much. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, a little disappointed and a little bit relieved. I kind of just want to go home and hang out with my kids. <laughs> It was a great experience though. I met a lot of really awesome people. We're down to four and I want to mention one thing. Ryan, I feel that right from day one, you've been able to maintain your focus. You've reached results in every single challenge that we've had. And in saying that, Ryan, you've made the position of first finalist and you will be moving forward into the finale. So congratulations. So that leaves us with the final three contenders. We only have one spot left to fill. Tiffany, why do you deserve to stay and go towards the finale? Um, I deserve to stay because I've put my all into this in every way that I possibly can. I learn from my mistakes and uh, I'm always wanting to move forward. Laurie, why do you feel you should move forward to the finale? I feel I should move forward because it's my time. It is just simply my time. I don't think it's a coincidence that I finally decided to uh, 
choose a career in real estate and this opportunity came up. Um, I'm going into real estate no matter what. So I think that's, I'm pretty serious about what I'm going to do. And Yaya? Yeah, yeah. I feel that I am the right person for this job and I have the skills, the experiences, the network and the background to succeed in this role and be an asset to Rockbridge. At Rockbridge Realty, we believe in a team concept. And there's one thing that I stand behind 100%. When the pressure rises and the stress, of course, increases with that, it's easy to get pulled off of the team concept. And it's easier to lose, lose focus on your end result. I feel that in this last challenge, two of you lost focus on the result. And that's been the deciding factor tonight. Tiffany and Yaya, uh, your interviews are over. Thank you, Yaya. Thank you, Tiffany. I did my best, I learned a lot, and uh, I'm excited to see what's coming up for me. You know, the biggest thing I'm taking away from this is the experience of it and realizing how much more I can do. You know, I'm really happy for Ryan and Lori. They both worked really hard to get to where they are, so all the best to them. And congratulations, Ryan and Lori, to making it to the final challenge for the interview season two. I'm very proud to announce that our business partner for this last and final challenge is Magna Electric Corporation. Magna Electric Corporation won the ABEX Award for Saskatchewan Business of the Year and was just recently awarded one of Canada's top 50 managed companies. They are gonna bring a ton of passion and a ton of energy and a great challenge to the table. So I'd like to introduce Chris Gingrass and Jocelyn Sago. As part of MEC here, we're really excited to be part of this uh, competition, the final competition, which is really exciting for us. I'd like Jocelyn to uh, announce what our competition is gonna be for the final week. All right, so to maintain our team environment, we are going to be asking you to first of all plan our grand opening for our brand new shop facility. We need you to also create a video invite and this video invite needs to target our key clients. And don't forget guys, we still need to see every child in Saskatchewan in the Imagine No Bullies t-shirts on April 4th, so you still need to find big donations we still need to raise $25,000 to reach our $100,000 goal. So you've got a lot to do this week. Congratulations, Ryan and Lori, for making it through to the finale. And thank you very much, Magna Electric Corporation, for providing this last challenge for the interview season two. Best of luck to both of you. Tune in Tuesday at 8 p.m. for the exciting results of this week's challenge, where you, the viewer, have the opportunity to vote for this week's winner.